Hey everybody, thanks for watching Reality Survival. For a limited time only, if you head over to powertech.com and use the code Reality Survival, all caps, all one word, you can get 40% off their all of their products site wide, you know, excluding sale items. So head on over to powertech.com, check them out, and uh, you know, get a good discount. Thanks, guys. Hey everybody, I'm JJ. You're watching Reality Survival. And right now, I am going to talk about top five ways to prepare for hyperinflation. So, is that thing crooked? I hate it when it's crooked. <laughs> okay. Um, top five ways to prepare for hyperinflation. Clearly, I'm not a financial expert. Not giving you financial expert advice. I'm just saying this is my opinion on the things that I would do because as I'm sure all of you have heard, uh, Bank of America has come out and said that we are going to experience, the United States is going to experience transitory hyperinflation. Now, I think that they're minimizing the situation a little bit. So I got some notes here. And, um, so I'll just go through what my opinions are and what I think, you know, is probably a, some good moves to make given the situation that we face. Uh, let's see. Number one is tangibles. Okay. So things that you use, things that you can put your hands on. Um, you know, the way that I kind of like to think about this is think about the next 24 to 36 months. And think about what stuff are you going to use between now and then. Maybe that's uh, food. Maybe that's toiletries, toilet paper, office supplies, hardware, wire, nuts, bolts, screws, nails, whatever. I don't know what it is. For your situation, look at whatever projects you've got going, what you've got you know, planned at your house, in, the, in your daily life and routine, and think, what can I purchase now that I know I'm gonna use? And then stockpile a little bit of that stuff, keep it on hand, and then in the end, as hyperinflation happens, the prices of all those items are gonna go up, but you'll already have them, and so you're gonna save a bunch of money, right? Um, number two, if you're thinking about selling your home and moving to a more rural area, you might wanna do it pretty soon. Now, this is a tricky situation because right now in America there are, <laughs> I have heard, I don't know if it's true, but there are more realtors in America than there are properties for sale. <laughs> um, <clears throat> there's an extreme shortage in a lot of places on properties to buy. But if you're moving from a place, say like a high cost of living place, like California, Chicago, New York, whatever, and you're going to move to some place like the Ozarks or Tennessee or something like that, you could probably find some land there. I don't know. You got it, but check into that before you make any moves. Like, don't just sell your house without knowing where you're going to move. Okay, that's a... And you can set up a contingency and all that kind of stuff. There's different ways to handle this. You can speak with a realtor. If you want a referral for a realtor, Shoot me an email at reality survival at protonmail.com and I will have my wife refer you to somebody. We'll make sure that you get somebody that's competent, you know. Um, but anyway, uh, selling your home, moving to a rural cost of living area. When hyperinflation happens, you're going to see bigger price gains in higher cost of living areas. Um, in lower cost of living areas, it's not going to be as bad. Now, it's still going to be bad but it's not going to be as bad. Uh, plus, you'll be in a better situation for when the crime rates go up and all that kind of stuff because as, as the hyperinflation happens and people's money starts falling short, you can guarantee yourself that there will be increased rates in crime. So it's a good idea to get out of the city as soon as possible. And I've been telling you guys this for years, but right now the real estate market is at a huge bubble. There's a huge, huge bubble right now, and it's going to pop eventually. So if you own a home and you've got a bunch of equity in it, you might as well take advantage of it, all right? Because it's going to pop. 
and it's gonna happen pretty quick, I think. Anyway, who knows, I might be wrong. Okay, but make sure you've got, make sure you've got a uh, property, you know, picked out that you can go to, get an offer in, get a contract, whatever, you know, it depends on your, your financial situation. But the bottom line here is, is that if you get a 30, rate, 30 year fixed rate loan with these interest rates, which are really low right now, still two and three, you know, somewhere in there, um, even if it's three and a half, it's still great. I mean, anything under six is historically a good interest rate. But if we start experiencing hyperinflation, the government is going to have to, at some point, start raising interest rates. Okay, they're, they just don't have very many tools to fight inflation like this, and they're going to have to start raising interest rates. So over the next 30 years, if you can get locked in at a 3% interest rate, and you know everybody else who buys in the next 10 years has to have you know, a 10 or 12% interest rate, you're going to be sitting pretty. So uh, really consider your real estate situation and where you want to be in the next few years because that's it's going to get tough okay so that was number two so we got tangibles we got sell your home and move to a rural area number three purchase equipment that you may need for future projects now the cost of equipment and everything else like that is going to go up we're already seeing big supply chain shortages all across the board in all markets and it's going to get worse. This is just the beginning of it. And honestly, if you ask me, I think that China will slow down the production of things just enough to start making it really pinch when all this stuff sets in. That's just my guess, I don't know. Um, so purchase equipment and things that you may need for future projects now, especially things that could be used for an additional side hustle additional income if times really get tough. Right now, your current primary income may be good to pay all your bills and everything, but what happens when we have to pay $7 a gallon for gas and food prices triple? Is your income still gonna handle that? I mean, I don't know. I don't know if it will. That's kinda, it depends on your situation. But if you have, you know, items that you could make potential money with a potential side hustle then you could fill that gap you might be able to okay so for example maybe lawn care stuff uh, lawn care business you know having a mower and a good weed eater and a, a trimmer and a blower and a trailer so you could take it around and you could you know mow grass for people or something um, maybe it would be I don't know a handyman business if you're good at repairing things or something like that or maybe it's purchasing a sawmill and cutting lumber and selling green lumber I mean the way the lumber prices are right now I mean I'm seriously considering doing that myself um, uh, maybe it's a small excavation business you know with a, a trailer and a little mini excavator or um, maybe it is firewood, you know, getting a, a log splitter and a chainsaw and, you know, the things that you need and you could go and, and cut and sell firewood or something. Stuff like that. Uh, I think especially if you could already incorporate it into your daily lifestyle and use it on a, on a regular basis, those are all going to be things to probably buy now because the cost of those is going to, is going to increase. So you may as well save yourself some money. Number four, uh, grow a garden. Um, and that may include buying a tiller and or, uh, you know, the raised beds, whatever you're going to make the raised beds out of, you know, get the material for that. I've got some that I got from Northern Tool. They are a 12 by 4, 12 foot by 4 foot wide by 12 inches tall uh, metal galvanized, you know, raised beds. I got a, a few of those. They had a good buy on them recently. They were... Um, $70, $79 or something like that. I think it was $79 each. And so for that much square footage, uh, comparing it to the other stuff that I was seeing out there, that was about the best buy that I can I could find. So if, if raised beds is something you're considering, you might look at Northern Tool. Um, but the thing is, is with the gardens, uh, you, wanna, you wanna put in as much garden as you can handle and maybe even you know just a little extra because not only will the cost of food rise during hyperinflation but if you needed to sell some of that stuff on the side of the road or something like that in a roadside stand then that could also make you some extra cash 
um, because the supply chain shortages in the food area are going to continue as well. Um, that leads us to our next one, get started in animal husbandry. So raising chickens, ducks, rabbits, goats, pigs, and if you have enough grass or enough land, cows. Um, this is going to pay off big time if there's real significant meat shortages. All right. Um, there's already a chicken shortage. A lot of people don't don't realize that uh, there's this pretty significant chicken shortage going on right now. Um, but if you have the ability, if you set yourself up so that you could raise a couple of pigs, if you could raise some rabbits, you know, just one buck and like three does would keep you in enough meat that just between the babies that they have, if you rotate them on a on a like it's a 21 day cycle, I think. You could basically keep yourself with a fairly fresh supply of meat with just four rabbits that are breeding continually. Um, and pigs are the same way. They're prolific as far as, you know, that goes. Uh, chickens, you can you could raise meat chickens. You could raise, um, you know, egg, egg chickens, you know, just for getting eggs. And uh, ducks uh, can, can lay a lot of eggs too. Khaki Campbells are great ducks for that. So just something to think about if it's if it's conceivable even some of these smaller ones You can do in the city, you know chickens and rabbits and stuff like that You can do in the city You don't have to have a rural property and 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 it could it could potentially help you um, Look into ways to try to save on their feed and all that kind of stuff because uh, the the cost of feed and all that will likely go up too so that is my top five ways to prepare for hyperinflation. I would love to know what your guys' suggestions are. Um, put those down in the description below. There's a lot of varying opinions on these things. And uh, I'd be curious to see what you guys have to say. So anyway, um, don't forget we have a, uh, right now for a limited time, we've got a coupon code uh, reality survival uh, over at powertac.com that'll save you 40% off site wide so go check that out and um, see you know what you what you think if you've got if they got anything that you want to buy they got some good flashlights and uh, you know if you get anything let me know I'd be curious to see what you guys get what you found if there's good deals and stuff so anyway guys don't forget to live the six P's proper prior preparation prevents poor performance Take care, and we'll see you on another video here shortly.